saying I abused my daughter. <coughs> you must be Samantha Laverty, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, this is your first appearance before court. Yeah, but yes, sir. Uh, you were arrested for battery in the second degree, endangering the welfare of a minor. Uh, two counts. District judge has reviewed an affidavit, found probable cause for your arrest. Uh, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say might be used against you in court. You have a right to a, a lawyer. If you can't afford a lawyer, make application to the public defender's office. And if you qualify, we'll appoint a, an attorney to represent you. And while you're in jail, subject to the regulations of the sheriff's department, you have a right to communicate with your family, your friends, and your attorney. And your bond's been set at $25,000. That's all we can do today. Is there any way I can request a um, bond reduction? Well, you can you can request it, ma'am. I, I read the affidavit, which the other judge had reviewed, and, and I'm going to leave it at that right now. So, thank you. You can stand aside. Do we have another 8.1 to do? I think there was two more. Okay, well, let me go. Kevin Quentin. Are you Kevin Quentin? Yes, sir. So I'm looking at an affidavit for probable cause for your arrest for possession of methamphetamine, possession of drug paraphernalia, driving on suspended license, expired vehicle tags, and also you were on uh, probation and the state has moved to revoke your probationary period. So this is your first appearance before court. You have a right to remain silent. Anything you say might be used against you. You have a right to a lawyer in both of these matters. If you can't afford a lawyer, make application to the public defender's office. And if you qualify, we'll appoint an attorney to represent you while you're in jail subject to the regulations of the Sheriff's Department. You have a right to communicate with your family, friends, and your attorney. For the new ch new charge, or what will, will probably be a new charge, the methamphetamine, drug paraphernalia, driving on a suspended, expired vehicle tax, the bond's been set at $2,500. Right now there's not a bond in the revocation. Is, is there any recommendation? Uh, Judge, we, can the court hear this matter? Uh, do you know who signed the, you may not. I do not. Let me look. Give me just a minute here, sir, and I'll, I'll determine who the, this revocation will be in front of. Which judge I'm trying to say. Excuse me, Honor. Yes, sir. While I'm waiting on this revocation, can I bond? Because my old lady's at home, she's blind, I got three kids at the house. That's what we're trying to, we're trying to determine, sir. Give me just a moment. Okay, I will set the revocation hearing for October 4th. If you're going to hire a lawyer or make application, you need to do that just as soon as you can. And uh, see if we can get you a lawyer and maybe discuss with the prosecutor and see if they can reach an agreement on bond. If not, I'll intervene. Uh, sir, we had, a re we had a real big issue last time because um, my public defender pretty much screwed this up. You know, Judge Webb's court, he caught him first time. And then uh, the lawyer used less time to paper. Judge Webb was out of town. And I got railroaded on the last case, and I damn sure don't want Mark Cooper again. Okay. Well, he probably won't be handling it since he doesn't, uh, he's not the primary public defender in my uh, division, so that should work out good. So, how am I, is this for me to understand, I'm going to be on your scheduling docket? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. So, I mean, is there any way that you can say, uh, is there any way you can make it, make it, I need to get, I need to get home. Sure you do. Why don't you make application to the public defender's office, or if you can't hire a lawyer, then let's get this thing moving. All right. Okay, thank you. Because my old lady, my old lady's at home, ma'am, and she's <coughs> blind. You know, I got three kids there. Well, I could ask questions, but I won't. This, we'll let it go at that. Thank you, sir. Yeah. State versus... 
Marvin Alden, 18-417, Possession Control Substance, Drug Paraphernalia. Good morning. Sir, do you yes. have a lawyer? No, sir. You're going to hire a lawyer and make application? No. no, sir. You're not going to do either one? No, sir. Okay. Let's see. Are you entering a plea of not guilty to these charges? No, sir. Plea of guilty. Okay. Well, I'll transport you over here and we'll address the matter. Thank you, sir. State versus Mark, is it Zidane, 18 4, 18. Possession of drug paraphernalia, theft by receiving, endangering the welfare of a minor. Are you going to hire a lawyer or make application to the public defender's office? Uh, sure. Sure which? Which are you going to do? Uh, hire a lawyer. Okay. Your case is before Judge Webb. I'll have you appear on... I'll have you appear before Judge Webb on September 27th at 8.30 a.m. All right. Thank you. Matthew Neatman, 18416, possession of drug paraphernalia. Good morning. Good morning. Do you have a lawyer, sir? Uh, no, sir, I don't. Going to hire a lawyer? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Your case is before Judge Webb. Appear before him on September 27th at 8.30 a.m. Thank you. Stand aside. State versus John Cox, 18-387, theft by receiving. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. I represent Mr. Cox. He is uh, currently uh, being held on charges of theft by receiving. I was met, uh, yesterday after speaking with him, he's been unable to post the bond that's been set for him at, I believe, $15,000. We're asking that the court consider for Mr. Cox a signature bond that his father could sign for him. His father is John Cox Sr. Um, John lives in Marion County. Uh, he lives in Flippin with his father. His dad is 77 years old and is, is in poor health. Mr. Cox does not work. He felt he injured himself and broke his back about three years ago and has applied for disability but hasn't received word on that award yet. Um, Your Honor, Mr. Cox addressed his charge driving a, a Ford pickup stolen out of Tennessee. I don't I don't know that, that was he was on any trip or that activity was assisting his seventy seven year old father. Um, He's got a $15,000 bond. I think that's someone's charged with a Class D felony. Uh, I'm not prepared to give the man a signature bond. If you want to reduce his bond, that's probably fine. I don't know where the I think the state's just as fine off with a $7,500 bond, but any representation that this man is just sits around his house and takes care of his father, is, that's incorrect. I don't think I said that, but... <laughs> I think it was implied that this man needs to get home and take care of his 77-year-old father. It sounds more to me like his 77-year-old father is taking care of him. What kind of vehicle was it? It was a we know Ford pickup pick truck. We know any more about it? Is it? Well, we know that it was reported stolen, Judge. Um, it's an old truck, new truck. Uh, hang on. I don't have any discovery on it. I'm sorry, that's the only thing it's mentioned. I'll set the bond to 7500 We'll reduce it to that. Your Honor, he's not been arraigned yet. He's not been arraigned, okay. We'll, we'll arraign him. Just, he will enter a plea of not guilty. Is that acceptable? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, we'll send out a scheduling order scheduling your trial. Thank you, sir. Thank you. State versus Joseph Rowden, 18411. Oh, 18190, 18321, 18325. Sir, I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you in your new case. Theft by receiving, possession of firearms for certain persons. We'll enter a plea of not guilty. We'll enter a plea of not guilty and we'll send out a 
scheduling order? What's to be done in these other cases? Judge, it's my understanding that a petition to revoke Mr. Rowden's bond has been filed. Okay, we good. would like to address bond today uh, and request that a reasonable bond be set that we should uh, cover all four Do we need to have a hearing on it? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll transport him to court that. Wayland Myers, 18301. Mr. Myers, I'm looking at a police statement here. Have you gone over this document? Yes, sir. And it looks like you signed it. Is that right? Yes, sir. Do you feel you understand what's in the document? Yes, sir, I do. Do you understand the charges against you and the range of penalties if you're convicted? Yes, sir. Are you pleading guilty to commercial burglary and theft of property? Yes, sir. You're giving up your right to a trial? Yes, sir. And giving up your right to an appeal by pleading guilty. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Are you entering this plea freely and voluntarily? Yes, sir. This document contains a recommendation as to what your sentence should be. Other than that, have you been promised anything to get you to change your plea? No, sir. Has anyone pressured or threatened you to get you to change your plea? No, sir. Sir, are you guilty of these crimes? Yes, sir. What did he do? Your Honor, on or about July 15th of this year, uh, this individual and, and another individual sometime during the overnight hours of July 15th entered a local business here in Baxter County and stole, uh, it was a commercial business, and stole some items including a, a uh, 2009 Honda uh, moped and at the same time they would have stole, stolen a security system valued at $800. Did you do that, sir? Yes, sir. This time, sir, accept your plea and judge you guilty. On each count, you're sentenced to five years in the Department of Corrections. Those will run concurrent. You'll pay $200 in cost, $2,000 fine, a DNA fee of $250, a $20 booking fee, $200 in public defender fees, $1,800 in restitution. Pay what you owe. The minimum rate of $100 per month beginning within 60 days after your release. You make your payments to the Baxter County Sheriff's Department. Yes, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. State versus Mike Mark. Right? Mark Dorman, 18209. Possession of drug paraphernalia, delivery, drugs and firearms, other charges. Yes. Honor, Sam Pastings asked that I stand in for him this morning. Uh, the issue that uh, Mr. Pastings had to Mr. Dorman is that uh, he's currently, I believe, on a cash-only bond. Okay. And there was some question whether the bondsman would have stayed on the bond. Uh, First Arkansas has agreed to do that, and Sam asked that I present this to the court and request a professional bond be granted. Well, it, it's, I, it's at a low of amount. I set it at cash. So let's leave it at that. Thank you, Your Honor. It's just fifteen hundred dollars. That's all we can do today, sir. Thank you. State versus George Crumsick, eighteen four twenty one. Theft of property, criminal mischief. Who represents you, sir? I don't have an attorney yet. I was hoping to hire a private counsel as soon as I I can get out of this. Let me see who. Well, your case is before. Well, I guess it's before me. When will I next be here? October 4th. I'll have you reappear on October 4th at 10 o'clock for attorney status and uh, arraignment. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. State versus Rebecca Wallace, 18422. Criminal mischief, aggravated assault, criminal trespass, battery. Good morning. Do you have a lawyer, ma'am? Do you have a lawyer? No. Are you going to hire a lawyer or make application to public defender? I don't know. Okay. I'll have you appear before Judge Webb on September 27th at 8.30. That's all we can do today. Thank you. Christopher Alsop, 18399. Sir, I've appointed the public defender's office to represent you. You charge with burglary, theft of property, criminal mischief, possession of drug paraphernalia. 
Judge Hill entered a plea of not guilty to those charges. Okay. We scheduled the matter for trial. Let's see. What? It's already scheduled. Yeah, on the first. I guess the week probably beginning April 1st, 2019. Not with Mr. Austin. Okay, you right. may stand aside, sir. Thank State you. State versus uh, Michael, is it Barron's? Yes, sir. Okay. 18 403. <coughs> Delivery of controlled substances, unlawful use of communication device, drug paraphernalia. Yes, sir. Uh, Judge, we're going to enter a plea of not guilty. Okay, we'll enter a plea of not guilty. We'll send out a scheduling order. And has the public defender been appointed? I think Judge, so. I believe I just handed you the application. Oh, you did, yes. I appointed the public defender to represent you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, can we get a bond reduction? Judge, I, I'll talk to Michael more about that. At this point in time, I've spoken with his family. Um, I don't know if that's going to be an issue. I'm going to talk to the prosecutor today, Mike, about an offer, and I'll be over to talk to you, okay? Oh, uh, I was asking about a bond reduction. Yeah, he, he's working on it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Clayton Kellyan, 18139, possession of drug paraphernalia. Judge, Mr. Killian is, uh, he's actually at the probation office right now. Um, okay. This is, uh, we're trying to get him screened for drug court. Um, if we can, I was going to ask, continue this. I don't know if you want to just recall it when he's well, here. Will he be here in a few minutes? He will. He will. Okay. We'll just wait on him. All right. Thanks, sir. State versus Cody Merriman, 18395, drug paraphernalia. Okay, it looks like he's already entered a plea and the public defender's been appointed. Is that right? Yes, sir. It looks like he's in front of Judge Way when they just okay. said it over for. We'll have to try your case the week beginning April 1st, uh, 9 o'clock a.m. You need to be here about 8 30. Yes, sir. Ready to go. Lowell Williams, 18397, entering apprehension, disorderly conduct, resisting, assault, obstructing governmental operation. Good morning. Good morning, Do you have a lawyer, sir? Uh, I'm going to turn in this application for a public defender. Okay. Is it filled out? Uh, I need the case number. I'll recall. Well, we, we can take care of that. Okay. okay. I'll recall your case. You can deal with them on it. Derek Garrells, 18385. Hey, I'm sorry, she wasn't ordered here. Derek Garrells, 18385. Possession of controlled substances, drug paraphernalia. I notice he failed to appear on the May 10th. Hey, this warrant shall issue bond for give notice to any surety. So is it in both cases? That's uh, 18385 and 18167 control substances drug paraphernalia Ms. Pruitt I'm looking at a police statement of some conditions of suspension or probation have you gone over these do what have you gone over these documents yes okay Can you speak up just a little uh, do you understand what's in the documents yes sir okay do you understand the charges against you and the range of penalty if you're convicted yes sir are you pleading guilty to possession of methamphetamine and possession of drug paraphernalia? Yes, sir. As you've heard me tell others, when you plead guilty, you give up your right to have a trial, and you cannot, you're giving up your right to have a trial, and you cannot appeal. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Are you entering this plea freely and voluntarily? Okay. Have you been promised anything other than what's in this document to get you to change your plea? No, sir. Okay, has anyone threatened or pressured you to get you to change your plea? Yes, sir. Yeah, are, are you guilty of committing these crimes? Are you guilty of committing these crimes? Yes, sir. 
What happened to you? Your Honor, about April 13th of uh, this year, here in the city limits of Mount Mount Home, uh, the defendant would have been in possession of a, a quantity 0.6 grams of, of methamphetamine and a uh, glass pipe used to ingest that. Is that true, ma'am? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. At this time, uh, time on each count, you'll be sentenced to four years in the Department of Corrections to be suspended. Is that your understanding? Probation. Oh. Four years suspended. Yes, sir. Okay. On conditions of probation. You pay two hundred dollars in costs, a two thousand dollar fine, a DNA fee of two fifty, twenty dollar booking fee, two hundred dollars in public defender fees, a drug crime assessment of one twenty five. Pay what you owe at a minimum rate of one hundred dollars per month, beginning within thirty days. It says sixty. We we'll leave it at sixty. Make your payments to the sheriff's department, okay? Yes, sir. And you'll need to see a probation officer before you leave. Oh. Okay. Wayne Estelle, 18-7. You know, I represent Mr. Estelle privately. I have a waiver of arraignment that he had signed. Uh, that case, you know, I will be filing this waiver that, that Mr. Estelle, as I told the court, has signed. Uh, I understand from talking to Uni that because of the filing that we're going to be on a tighter schedule in order than what we normally are, and I'm fine with that, Judge. Very well. Has this defendant ever appeared in this court? This is his arraignment. Uh, he's ordered to be here, but for whatever reason, he's not here. But anyway, I guess if you'll file the arraignment, we'll go from there. Jamie Southard, 16-316. Drug case. And I represent Mr. Southern privately. This is his first appearance on the revocation. Judge, would you see who signed this gentleman's police statement back in March? No, Judge Webb did. Well, it says amended sending, then there's an order of null process. Well, maybe that's on certain counts. You know, I. I believe that Judge Webb signed that. He, this gentleman was sentenced to CCC, and I believe that was pursuant to an order out of Judge Webb's court. Okay, he just needs to appear before Judge Webb on a petition to revoke. That'll be on uh, September 27th, 8:30. That's fine, Judge. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 15:402. Judge, he's got an appointment to be screened for drug court uh, okay. uh, on, that, on Tuesday. If we could continue this, I guess, on your October 4th docket, we'll try to get him in front of Judge Webb to enter a plea as, as soon as possible, Judge. Is it scheduled for trial? It is, that, that October 15th, I believe. Okay, we'll continue to October 4th.